All right, welcome back to the channel. This is Steve, amateur radio call sign K2GOG with Hudson Valley Digital Network. And today we're going to be doing some spurious emission testing. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let me give a, uh, a big shout out to uh, the Smoke and Ape, who has uh, recently done a video on the spurious emissions for the Aliens Retivus HD2 radio. I will be doing the same thing, but slightly in a few different ways. So let's get going. So let me just first explain a little bit first about the test environment here. We are not looking at lab grade measurements. That is not the goal of this. I want you to consider this as relative signal readings. So just please bear that in mind. This is not meant to be a lab grade analysis. I certainly could have set that up, but I wanted to do something a little different. So because I am a little different, I thought rather than doing what is known as the standard test for test for spurious emissions that requires taking a transmitter, hooking it through an attenuator, and then taking the attenuator and connecting that to your measurement device, such as a tiny uh, S8 Ultra that I'm using, which is the same one as the Smoke and Ape has uh, used for his review. Uh, what I am doing is not using an attenuator because I want to see some real life conditions. And so uh, the way that I'm uh, measuring that is I've taken the uh, tiny SA Ultra, I've connected a small uh, diamond HT style uh, HT antenna to the port of the tiny SA Ultra. And so what you're seeing on the uh, spectrum chart here is some actually over the air signals. And so at the bottom end, and I've set the range from 100 to 350 megahertz, here in the United States, we have the FM broadcast band, so you can see those um, signals down there. And then up around the 144 megahertz range, um, just so happens to be some locally generated noise emanating from a local router that I have here in my office, and that has a clock frequency of around 144. So it's not too uncommon to see things like this, and I would highly suggest you uh, using something like a, a tiny SA or tiny SA Ultra to walk around and just see where some signals are emanating from various electronics around in your house. Alternatively, uh, you could also utilize an SDR, such as a RTL SDR V4 connected to your computer, uh, running other software like SDR Angel. And again, very useful to see what signals are around. But in this case, Let's get going here with the review. So today, doing something a little different. So we're going to be comparing four radios. We have the Aliens uh, Retivus uh, HD2. We also will be comparing this against a much older radio named the Alinko DJ G5, which is known for high quality um, manufacturing standards and pretty good RF performance. Then we also will be comparing this against two radios that came out roughly around the same time a few years ago. We have the Kenwood THD74, which is a tri-band radio, so that's 144, 220, and 430. We have a Launch HGUV98, which is a 144 and 430 megahertz radio. Uh, the reason I'm comparing all four of these is to show some differences from dates of manufacture, similar manufacture periods, and of course the HD2, which is the most current. It's also worth noting that the launch HG UV98 is what I would equate to something similar to a Baofeng or similar type of uh, production radio. And I think that's probably going to be the closest comparison from a engineering perspective to the HD2. So let's get started. Um, the way that I'm going to be conducting this test, since I am transmitting over the air, is each transmission I will identify with my amateur call sign. Not that I'm expecting my signals to go too far, but I want to remain within compliance of my operating license. So the first radio up for test is going to be the Alinko DJ G5. And I'm transmitting a few feet away from the a tiny SA Ultra, so this way I do not uh, desensitize the front end on the spectrum analyzer. So here we go, first transmission. This is Kilo 2 Golf Oscar Golf transmitting on 144.0 with the Alinko DJ G5TH. Uh, worth noting, we can see the primary transmit frequency 
being read uh, it's slightly off that's to be expected we're not really looking for frequency accuracy here we're just looking for where the primary RF emission is taking place so this is exactly what we should see and what's notable is we see pretty much almost no harmonic activity at all north of the primary transmit frequency except for a small spike up around the 298 range and we'll talk about that a little bit later but it's clear we can see there's really no spurious emissions happening with this great older radio all right so now let's move to radio two uh we're gonna try the kenwood uh, thd 74 and not the new version the d75 because i wanted to have a radio a few years older uh and again similar date of manufacture as the launch uv98 so here we go this is k2 gog testing kenwood thd74 on 144.00 uh, we notice that there is a notable harmonic at the 289 megahertz or so range and that is to be expected given this is a tri-band radio with wider filtering so that is the kenwood d74 all right two radios out of the way and now we'll go to the launch hg uv98 so same same exact scenario here this is k2gog testing on 144.000 uh, we see actually two harmonical related spikes, both at the 289 and uh, 215 range. But what's interesting with this radio is that spike actually goes away after just a few moments of transmission. Very interesting. But we can continue to see the, uh, the harmonic up there in the 289 range. So this again is the launch HGUV98. All right, and moving to the fourth and final radio, and then we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison for everybody. So the uh, the HG2, I have gone through the unlock procedures that allows me to transmit on the 220 megahertz band. This is a radio designed for this, or according to some of the manufacturer's material, um, but again, it depends on where you read it. Some of the manufacturers' brochures market it as a 144 to 146 and 430 to 440 radio. Others say 136 to 174 to 400 to 480. Um, or you could unlock it and then it allows you to expand both of those ranges and both receive and transmit, plus open up the 220 uh, megahertz band, which is available in the United States from 222 to 225, and then also 219 to 220 on a secondary basis so uh, let's go ahead and uh, give the fourth radio a final test here this is kilo 2 golf oscar golf testing a aliens retivus hd2 on 144.000 uh, here we can see uh, a pronounced harmonic spike in the 289 megahertz range further away than what we would like to see and uh, now let's go ahead and uh, do a comparison of all four radios. All right, so uh, looking at uh, all four radios uh, side by side, um, this gives a much better idea. Clearly, the uh, older Alingo DJG5 back from uh, 1996 is well engineered. Um, the opposite end of the spectrum, literally, uh, is the launch HGUV98. You know, even though that this is a uh, relatively uh, newish radio, just from a few years ago, uh, clearly there's some uh, manufacturing issues given both a spike that happens uh, transmitting for the first few seconds of transmission, plus a very well pronounced harmonic in the 289 range. Uh, then we move to the Kenwood D74, which is roughly a four hundred dollar us more to purchase compared to the launch so we're talking about a more expensive radio very different feature set but it still has a uh, a spurious emission in the 289 range um like uh the launch radio and then finally uh the reason for doing this video was to look at the aliens redivis hd2 and so we certainly notice that there is a large spike there so again hopefully you found this video 
uh, interesting. And again, we only tested one frequency. Uh, maybe there'll be some time to do some additional testing for out of band on other uh, frequencies, such as uh, instead of doing 144, maybe I'll do uh, a 220 megahertz frequency as well as maybe something up in the 430 range. But I'm not expecting anything majorly different. So hopefully this review of the two meter uh, spurious uh, transmissions was helpful. Give this video a like and hope to catch you next time. Take care.